Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Herma Dimak. This edition Stop Stories. The third term of the school year opens under strict COVID-19 guidelines. The Cabinet of Ministers takes a major decision that would redound to the benefit of St. Lucians. And Agriculture Minister Honorable Isakal Joseph outlines progressive changes in the fishing sector. The nation's students made a return to the physical classroom on Monday, 19 April 2021, as the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations declared the third term in the academic year open. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Myers says, although students were away from the classrooms for some time to protect their health, she's happy to be able to welcome them back for a third term. Luckily, we've had loads of parents really speak to the importance that they see in terms of the students being back. Our educators are prepared for them. They're welcoming them back in droves. They're putting on special presentations for them, looking at the physical infrastructure, because we recognize as educators that the longer children stay away from the physical infrastructure of a school setting, the more difficult it is for them to readjust. Dr. Meyer says while challenges and limitations may arise, it will be managed through collaborative effort of parents and teachers as they strive towards the progress and success of each child. Speaking to the health and safety of students, the chief education officer expressed confidence in the children's ability to follow protocols. I would always argue that our students know the protocols better than the adults, particularly our little ones, our infant ones, our primary school children are very good at that. They come in, they come in with their mask, they've done the hand washing, they will remind the adults to sanitize. The social distancing continues to be a significant part of our protocols. And so we have done a lot in terms of educating our children. Similarly, the national public service announcements, our children are very much aware of what to do. So right now it's really about implementing them. It is more about the adults leading the way and showing the examples to our children and also praising them when they do the right things. Parents are also urged to engage students at home on the importance of following the protocols. The House of Assembly on Friday, 16th April 2021, concluded debate on the 2021-2022 budget with several pronouncements made by the government. St. Lucians are to benefit from several housing and land rationalization programs to be rolled out by government. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney detailed the programs as he presented the Appropriation Bill 2021-2022 in Parliament Tuesday, 13th April. Honorable Chastney said the housing policy and related interventions by government have consistently been rooted in four main principles. To increase the number of St. Lucian land and homeowners to provide our citizens with access to safe and affordable housing, to rationalize existing unplanned settlements, and to establish residential land developments around the island. In last year's budget address, I alluded to the commencement of a number of initiatives with respect to settlement upgrades and the rationalization of several unplanned developments. These are ongoing activities. The full approval for the development plans of OPICA, OJ being granted by DCA. Mr. Speaker, our sites and services program this year will focus on the provisions of approximately 133 lots in Lafague, PI, Monnier, and the Richbat T. Rocher Miku. We're also looking at 290 lots in the community of Angers and another 250 lots in Volet. The infrastructure associated with this program includes the construction of double-lane concrete access roadways and associated reinforced concrete drains and culverts, as well as the installation of water and electricity supply networks. Honorable Chastney further informed that two new housing developments in Odsa and Bele will commence this year and will impact at least 200 households. Honorable Chastney told the House that government must ensure that existing residents are not left out of the formal development space that is being created. Affordable lots must be provided, he said, for those who want to become property owners. Provisions must also be made for commercial operations, recreational green spaces, institutional uses, and multifamily structures. Mr. Speaker, all of our people deserve to live with an environment that makes them feel safe. 
They want an environment that it reflects their broad appreciation and provides a sense of dignity and worth. We intend to deliver that to them. It is my expectation that this initiative, along with others driven by the private sector, will serve to advance and enhance the conversation surrounding settlement development in St. Lucia. In this context, the review of the national housing policy and strategic plan that will be undertaken this year is most opportune. Plans for housing developments in Shock, Talvin and Boisjoli are also underway. Minister for Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries and a member for Ancillary Canneries, Honorable Dominic Fede, meantime, told the House that Cabinet had taken a major decision that would redound to the benefit of St. Lucians as government introduces village tourism. Honorable Fede announced that lands at Ashabet Canneries is being set aside for local investment only. For the first time in the history of tourism development, there will be a dedicated tourism zone, Mr. Speaker, so that all St. Lucians can invest, can go to a beachfront property, buy a piece of land with infrastructure, water, electricity, roads, all of it that will be put in, Mr. Speaker. The lands have been vested with Invest St. Lucia. And I look forward, Mr. Speaker, to work with my colleague, the Minister of Investment, so that we can bring, Mr. Speaker, over 500 new St. Lucian businesses into the tourism fray, owning their villas, owning their cottages, owning their bed and breakfast, owning their restaurants, Mr. Speaker. We are putting up lands, Mr. Speaker, that the previous administration uh, have, would, have, would have made available, Mr. Speaker, to foreign investors only. But when we talk about village tourism, we're talking about people. When we talk about bringing tourism to this population, we are doing everything, Mr. Speaker. And so the legislation will go a long way to allow them, whether there is one bedroom, two bedroom, or six bedrooms, they will be able to benefit from concessions. Minister Fede added that over the years, local interest in the tourism sector had grown immensely. Mr. Speaker, statistics show that there are over 4,000 H plates, Mr. Speaker, mostly within the car rental and tour companies facilitating tourism to the tourism boom, which characterized the pre-COVID years of our administration. Mr. Speaker, the National Conservation Authority, NCA, has issued unprecedented levels of licenses to small boat operators, beach chair vendors, craft vendors, and other self-employed persons Mr. Speaker, within the tourism industry. Mr. Speaker, thanks to the hardworking staff at the Ministry of Tourism, there are more St. Lucians today that have received concessions under the Tourism Incentive Act than ever before in the history of this country, Mr. Speaker. And that is because of our vision, Mr. Speaker, of bringing the industry to the people of St. Lucia. Honorable Dominic Fede, as he contributed to the debate on the 2021-2022 budget. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Isikal Joseph, has refuted claims that government has abandoned the fishing sector at the most critical period in the nation's history. Minister Joseph, during his contribution to the budget debate, reported that the transition from the St. Lucia Fish Marketing Corporation to the Lucian Blue Ocean Seafood Inc. has proven beneficial to fishers. Lucian Blue Ocean, Honorable Joseph added, has increased the purchase of fish. In 2018, Mr. Speaker, the St. Lucia Fish Marketing Corporation purchased $287,604 fish locally from local suppliers. That was the amount for 2018. In 2019, because it started operating from May 2019 to December 2019, local purchases was $142,266, Mr. Speaker. Of course, Mr. Speaker, during that time, those opposite were discouraging fisher fishermen to go and sell to the, fish, to the new entity. And of course, there was some level of reluctance by some fishermen not to sell to the new entity. 
The speaker in 2020, when the confidence of the fisher, fishermen developed, what we realized, Mr. Speaker, in 2020, they purchased 438,410 dollars, much more than what was purchased in 2018. Honorable Joseph also updated the House on the COVID assistance to fishers provided by government. In November 2020, the Ministry of Agriculture presented grant funding to cooperatives to disperse the eligible fisher folk. Since then, 789 fishers have received the relief funds. However, 239 have not collected. To qualify for the income support program from the government of St. Lucia, Fisher folk needed to be registered with the Department of Fisheries and also be captured on the 2019 to 2021 fishing license application as a boat owner, captain or crew member associated with the vessel. For example, Mr. Speaker, the cooperative, the Swazel Fisherman's Cooperative, still have $4,500 on their hands to pay their members. The Sufre Fisherman's Cooperative, Mr. Speaker, still have about $1,000 to pay their members. The Goodwill Fisherman's Cooperative, Mr. Speaker, the Goodwill Fisherman's Cooperative, yes, the member for Denry, for Miku, for Vifort, North, the Goodwill Fisherman's Cooperative still have $42,000 in their hands to give support to fishermen. The Miku Fisherman's Cooperative, Mr. Speaker, $18,500. The Denry Fisherman's Cooperative, Mr. Speaker, yes, the, mem the member for the Valley, $20,000. Grosselet Fisherman's Cooperative still have $3,000 in hand. And the Cassius Fisherman's Cooperative, Mr. Speaker, still have $23,500 to give support to the members, Mr. Speaker. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quayal. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Quayol. Merci autant, Homer. Monsieur, Madame, Département, qui n'est pas responsable de formation en gouvernement en cette ci ça c'est GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale pays à NTN, car pour cette nouvelle à Quayol, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Durant la présentation deuxième par budget pour l'année 2021, ou vende, Premier ministre aussi, Honorable Alain Chasney, annoncé que le gouvernement a pompé plusieurs millions de dollars à développement des affaires construction avec l'autre projet pour bâtir un pays. Durant la adresse de mardi le 13 avril 2021, Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a déclaré que, en budget l'année ici, le gouvernement mettait à part 120,5 millions de dollars pour travailler fait associer ce chemin pays. Parmi ces projets chemin qui a sur la liste, c'est le projet de réhabilitation Grand Chemin Millennium, sorti Castri pour souffrir, projet pour vivre et bâtir un pont neuf en paresse cal de sac, projet pour improuver à ce chemin pays-là qui a continué, projet national pour continuer à bâtir et improuver à ce chemin en cette paresse, et projet Grand Chemin Gozile pour Castri qui, le Premier ministre l'a dit, c'est presque un finissement. Le Premier ministre Chasse a annoncé aussi le projet Chemin pour réduire à sous des as, le gouvernement mettait l'argent à part pour ranger chemin Vana pour Venus Amulet, pour Opiaï et chemin Vana pour Aslaoué, qui a coûté en tout 25,9 millions de dollars. En l'argent, ça a 83,4% sorti de la banque mondiale et institution finance des pays Europe. Le Premier ministre Chasse aussi mentionné le travail chemin qui a fait tout au Liban pays là, particulièrement. C'est par cela qui était trouvé négligé pour plusieurs années et qu'à présent, qu a trouvé bon support pour manger chemin, canal, savant sport en parmi l'autre. Le Premier ministre Chasse a déclaré que pour continuer l'investissement à ces communes pays, le gouvernement a placé 10,7 millions de dollars à un programme pour aider le développement de ces diverses communes 
10.08 million dollars à l'agence à la sortie hot si pour finance des pays de République Chine à Taïwan. Pour assistance service l'eau, le Premier ministre Chasse remarqué que pour plusieurs années, sous le pays, en particulier face à sud et nord de Vieux-Fort, avec le village de la Boy, pas de trouver le service d'eau qui était suffit. Si Alors, le gouvernement a agrandi le système de projet de l'eau pour se parler ça là, en face à tout ce et puis 24,2 millions de dollars, et puis finance le banque de développement caribé là, c'est le banque de développement caribé là, et il a annoncé aussi, durant l'année financière là, le projet de développement de l'eau pour des nuits, qui a entré en bout finalement, le travail qui a continué à sous dame de l'eau John Compton pour nettoyer, et après, le grand travail ça là, plus que 100 000 personnes qui ont une assurance de sécurité de l'eau et qui ont réduit à ce mal de tête de la saison. Leçon à l'école pays a commencé le 19 avril 2021 après consultation et tous les Grecs qui ont engagé en affaires d'éducation. Le gouvernement a clôt de la saison à l'école. Les étudiants qui apprennent de diverses façons des études comme qui déjà a fait en toute institution de l'éducation. Le ministère de l'Éducation dit qu'il a félicité et applaudi les éducateurs et les parents en façon de supporter les étudiants. Ce qui est plus important, selon le ministère de l'Éducation, c'est la santé et la protection pour les étudiants et pour les là, La jadis, c'était travailler en cette école-là qui a une spéciale responsabilité pour préparer l'école pour faire ça. Mais à part de ça, le département d'éducation a continué pour dépend à ce JID, au ministère de la Santé, pour faire assurer que les seules écoles continuent sans les sauver. Ces institutions d'éducation qui continuent comme la coutume, l'aide pour vendre et qui suivent ces néditants qui en place pour l'école au pouvoir, à dans l'école qui a adopté ces sessions de leçons pour si maintenant et tièrement, dépend à ce grand de l'école là et la population, c'est l'école ça là. Trois, quatre écoles qui au pouvoir, qui servi le système côté, qui ont sauté un jour. Pour les étudiants suivent les leçons en chambre d'école. La a un système de 6 jours, mais 3 jours qui en place, côté les étudiants qui en direct contact et puis les instituteurs, ça veut dire à l'école. Même quand qui était déjà établi avant. La a une permission pour grand quantité de monde comblé à part gal et activité sport qui seulement pour groupe qui pas de même. Et activité sport côté yon pas qu'à toucher yon à l'autre. Le département d'éducation a continué pour rester en pré-contact et puis tout ce qui est engagé en service d'éducation et en particulier, particulier les sons pour les étudiants à l'école. Ça c'est pour que tout étudiant aussi une bonne leçon et qui est à la route éducation. Le principal officier de nos pour l'hôpital d'Henry, Mme Yolande Alcindor, a dit qu'il est nécessaire pour avoir une bonne communication et puis les autres pour aider à faciliter le ménagement de n'importe quel projet. Nos Alcindor, qui est responsable aussi pour ménager la maladie Corona à l'hôpital Sala, a créé qui seule manière pour les gens qui ont et puis puis ont l'autre, c'est là où il y a de bonnes communications et puis yo. Nos Alcindor a été à la télévision indienne pour conseiller les gens pour prendre, bon, pour prendre plus de bonnes précautions contre la maladie Corona. Même si nous n'avons pas toutes les informations, mm -hmm. nous n'avons pas mm -hmm. tout le monde qui est involvé, mm -hmm. communication, les informations, les informations, les informations, les informations, les informations, les informations, les et puis informations, les 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 Coyon hot malady corona. Et c'est comme ça nous avons la nouvelle. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que vous encore. Si Dieu conserve la vie, vous pouvez vous présenter une nouvelle en croyant. À présent, vous pouvez vous présenter Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Peter Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Gomedi Mark.